every single year, all LOL esports watchers are reminded of the Gigabyte Marines jungler Levi. He is by far the most standout player from any minor region. Without fail, he always shows up at Worlds and stands toe-to-toe -to -toe against the best players in the world. In this LOL Esports and Skill Capped collaboration, we wanted to highlight his incredible skills and how he dominates his own region every single year. As a professional jungler, Levi has a lot of responsibilities, jungle pathing, objectives, vision control, etc. But the main goal of any jungler, whether it be competitive or solo queue, is to set up successful ganks. This, however, is easier said than done. As any jungler knows, there's no worse feeling than trying to set up a gank only for the enemy laner to simply walk away. Failing a gank is a terrible feeling. Not only have you wasted a ton of your own time, but you've also shown yourself on the map, and this is especially bad in competitive play where communication and punishes are much more refined. The enemy jungler is now completely aware of what you're up to. In competitive play, they'll even count your CS to know your exact route and can probably predict where you'll be for the next two minutes of the game. It definitely feels bad to fail a gank in solo queue, but it is infinitely worse in competitive. Which is why learning guaranteed gank timings are so important. These are plays where you are 90% or more likely to succeed in scoring a kill, or at the very least force your opponents out of lane. And there is no bigger guaranteed gank timing than when you go for a tower dive. Levi knows this very well, and he is one of the most aggressive tower divers we've ever seen. We're going to teach you exactly how he executes these dives to guarantee that he can snowball his team almost every single game. Just keep in mind that Levi obviously has teammates on voice comms to execute these dives, but he's versed far more experienced players who know how to play around the threat of a dive. They stay full HP, play well defensively, etc. Meanwhile, you won't have his level of coordination, but your opponents are far more likely to be lower on health and mess up playing defensively. While you will experience slight differences, the concepts we'll cover will work the exact same way in either competitive or solo queue. First things first, the most important concept before executing any dive is to simply understand the risk versus reward factor of it. Even in perfect coordinated environments, tower dives are going to go wrong. Bad calls are made and misclicks happen. You cannot be sure that every play is going to work. This is especially true in solo queue. What Levi does to circumvent these risks is actually really smart. Almost all of his tower dives happen much earlier into the game rather than later. You can tower dive at any point in the game, but Levi is much more insistent on it during these crucial early levels of the match. Here's why. What is the reward of a dive? A kill is nice, obviously, but the massive wave that your opponent is missing to the tower while being dead is a bigger deal. The value of missing a couple waves during the early game is absolutely massive for laners. During the first few levels, a couple waves can be the difference between one or two levels worth of experience. Whereas at level 8, for example, missing two waves doesn't have that same effect as it did before. Diving someone and killing them at level 8 is still good, but it won't set them as far behind as an earlier dive would. This is a really good example of this. Here, Levi dives the enemy top laner at level 4. Jax has no teleport, so we can only watch as he misses a few waves to his tower. Not only that, but because the wave has crashed, it will bounce back towards your teammate's side of the lane. This means that when both players are back in lane, Renekton has a massive lead, plus the wave is in a frozen state. This is horrible for Jax. He's down a level, with the wave being in a terrible position as well. You can see how the massive gold lead that the Gigabyte Marines have later into the game is off the back of Renekton snowballing out of control from that previous dive. To put it simply, the risk of things going wrong is worth the massive reward that his top laner will get from the dive. The other major reason why early dives are so weighted in your favor is that death timers are really short early on into the game. Here, Levi is ganking another poor Jax and manages to kill him despite dying to the tower. As we discussed, showing on the map and dying is usually a go signal for the enemy jungler to take something elsewhere on the map. We can see the enemy Sejuani's intention here. As she watched her top lane get dove, she thought about her own dive or even invading the grump that's respawning. But because Levi's death timer is so short, she just doesn't have that much time to do anything. Not only that, but during the early levels, the Rift Herald hasn't even spawned, and Dragon is fairly hard to solo for most junglers. Basically, you're going to be back out on the map before your opponent gets the chance to do much, which is why taking that tower dive risk during the early game isn't as big of a deal. Levi simply respawned and got back to power farming without being punished. For the same reason, dives that go wrong later into the game tend to have much worse outcomes for you. Your longer death timer will typically give the enemy jungler way more time and opportunities to punish you. Okay, so where do you draw the line between early into the game where dives are high value and when they stop being as impactful? Well, this brings us to our special skill cap tip. 
respawn timers steadily go up throughout a game based on both your level and the in-game time. However, from level 6 to 7, there is an immediate bigger bump in your death timer from before and now they start to go up even faster per level. To put this simply, from level 6 and below, you can be a lot more liberal in your tower dives because even if you die, you'll be respawning fairly quickly. This makes level 6 a very unique spike for junglers that they can take advantage of. At this specific level, you have the power of your ultimate that allows you to dive enemy champions more easily. But you can also fall back on the fact that your respawn timer is still relatively short. If you pair that with home guards, you're not off the map for very long at all if you happen to die. This also means from level 7 onwards, you should be a bit more careful about dives that could go wrong. Your death timer will be much longer at this point and can give your opponents the chance to cross map an objective or a play of their own, which we discussed previously. And this brings us to the next thing Levi does remarkably well, the actual execution of his dives. As we just saw from this previous dive, it is really annoying trying to dive champions that have frustrating abilities you need to play around. Stuff like Vladimir's Pool, Lissandra Ult, Malphite R, Callista R, we could go on and on. In an ideal world, you don't have to play around these abilities. For example, when Levi goes to dive this Gnar at a first glance, this looks like a terrible dive. However, he's aware that Gnar's ultimate is down since he used it to shove a wave. This means that Gnar is extremely vulnerable despite being in his mega form, and Levi knows they have exactly enough damage to take him down. But in solo queue, you can't rely on information from your teammates half the time, so what can you do? Levi has an extremely deadly dive timing that you need need to learn and abuse as well as he does. He consistently plays around this very specific timing. When his level 3 teammates are crashing a wave on his level 2 opponents, he is almost always there to capitalize on it. This is a crucial timing that can win you games. Here's why. Most champions have some form of utility spell in their kit. It can be mobility, CC, a shield, etc. A lot of these utility spells are the frustrating abilities you have to get through during a dive. What's convenient though is that a ton of champions do not skill up their utility spell until level 3. Some examples of this would be Gangplank not having oranges yet, Wukong not having clone, Morgana without black shield, Lulu with no polymorph, and so on. And like we said, Levi abuses this timing constantly. Here we can see him skip Gromp and run to his bot lane. What's nice about this timing is that Rakan is missing his E, a crucial ability that could make the dive much more annoying to execute. Meanwhile, both his own teammates have access to their full combos at level 3. This makes it all the easier to secure the kills during the dive. Same thing here, Levi skips a camp to dive at this timing, where Lulu doesn't have her polymorph yet. They trade one for one, which is definitely worth it considering just how much they're denying the enemy AD carry. This is an absolutely devastating timing that will let you score kills consistently whenever you see the opportunity to do so. Of course, this is going to be much more replicable in competitive play. Don't expect to do this every single game in solo queue. That being said, if you're ever in the middle of your route, check your teammates lane stays early on. If you see that you have an aggressive lane building a big slow push at level 3, and that your opponents are already a bit chunked down, then you should definitely consider altering your path to be there to punish their level 2. The game doesn't stop at level 3 though, so let's take a look at some other ways Levi plays around frustrating anti-dive abilities. The next best thing you can do is bait those key spells out during the dive and there's a couple of ways to do so. First, you can walk up to someone you're potentially going to dive, just stand right on top of them like this. So a big point here is that you don't want to tank a major CC ability while you have tower aggro. So you just stand on your opponent and see if they panic press their ability before you've even done anything. Skill checking your opponents like this is far more likely to work in lower elos, but be prepared for your opponents to keep their cool and not fall for your bluff. The nice thing about this tactic is that if your opponent plays well like this Malphite, you can usually walk away with your life since you never fully committed to the dive. Walking up to someone less experienced in solo queue will definitely cause someone to panic more often than versus professional players. That being said, if you want better results, the more convincing your bluff is, the more likely you'll be able to bait out a key ability. To do that, keep in mind that a lot of junglers have a lot of non-committal spells that can make it seem like you're going aggressive without actually drawing tower aggro. Let's go back to our earlier clip, as it was a great example of Levi doing this. Right before they dive jacks, Levi cast Iron Shield on Renekton. This is typically the go signal for any Ivern dive, but it doesn't actually draw aggro until the shield pops. By doing so, he successfully baited Jax's Counter Strike, then all they have to do is engage once it's out of the way, and the dive is executed cleanly. Like we said, a lot of junglers have spells like this that will more reliably bait out spells. Burrowing under someone as Rek'Sai, Viego's Mist, Warwick's Fear, Elise can also get tricky and W behind herself, etc. Just keep in mind that in solo queue, using an ability might bait your own teammates into thinking you're committing to the dive. So, before trying to use this tactic, Tactic, at least communicate to them that you want to bait out a spell first, otherwise things can get dicey pretty quick. The final thing that Levi is extremely disciplined about before any dive is making sure he knows exactly where the enemy jungler is on the map before committing to the tower dive. Going for a dive and getting countered is a surefire way to throw any game. And we constantly see this from less experienced junglers. This Wukong didn't track Levi before trying to dive and is appropriately punished for it. This is very simple and takes almost no effort to pull off, but it's the discipline of doing it every time that matters. For example, as Levi is pathing through the jungle 
role as Lee Sin, he spots Wukong attempting to gank mid, but Wukong just falls back into the Botside River. The second he sees this, you can immediately see pings to go towards top. It's only once he gets that confirmation of where Wukong is that Levi skips camps to go execute on a level 2 dive, which we've already discussed. The main reason for tracking the enemy jungler though is for dives that require a lot more patience. Like in this game, Levi sees that the enemy Poppy has secured the dragon. This means he can make his way up here to dive Jax. But Rel and Cassante don't have the best burst, and Jax is fairly tricky to dive with his alt and counter-strike. Thankfully, Levi has the knowledge that he can take his time here. He and his partner can slowly and methodically burn through all of Jax's abilities until he's out of juice and can be taken down. These types of slow dives would be much riskier if you're not properly tracking junglers, so make sure you're always keeping track of whether a counter gank could be coming your way. And those are all the fundamentals you need to tower dive as consistently and effectively as Levi does. He's an amazing player at all parts of the jungle role, but we really wanted to highlight the special skill that he excels at scoring kills with. Thanks for watching, and catch you again next time.